Damn, Javier looks fit. I need to know the workout prep. Oh, really? Thank you for bringing up the good ones. <laughs> it's only since two years ago that I'm doing some weights and I love it. I'm not getting any younger, I'm 54. We need to build muscle in order to have a healthier old age, as the experts say. So I'm, I'm finding it very encouraging and, and fun as well. I enjoy it, actually. I like doing it. Hi, I am Javier Bardem. As we all know, internet is a place with a lot of people, and that means a lot of opinions, good and bad. And today we're going to read some of them in Don't Read the Comments. I am curious how physically hard it was to film because the entire cast looks mad fit. <laughs> it wasn't easy. I don't know what they did, but I know that having to wear that still suit in the heat for so many hours and be able to not sweat. Fremen don't sweat. Me, I'm a sweater. <laughs> and we have some problems sometimes where it's like, okay, cut, you cannot sweat. You have to be in shape for that. Mamoa says Javier is a boss wonder if they worked out together. No, no, I will never work out <laughs> with Jason Momoa, are you kidding? He's so strong like Jesus, he's, he's super fit and strong and, and he's super sweet and fun and nice and adorable. I remember in 2019, my kids were like uh, six and, and nine and he was throwing them from the pool to the other side of the pool in the water and they were flying, literally flying and they loved it and I said, oh, what adorable human being. <laughs> He's so good at playing villains, but what hero should he be cast as? I think Stilgar from Doom Part 2 is kind of a hero, actually. He's a hero to his people, and he's a hero to the cause. When I first read the books, I immediately felt drawn to Stilgar's character because he's iconic. Does he get to write a soundworm? Yes. On the second part, Doom Part 2, yes. And I was looking for it in a big way, and it was amazing. And also kind of thrilling because they build this real size back of the soundworm on the set that you have to uh, hop in and and they will move in it like side to side, up and down, throwing wind and sand to your face. Talking about being fit, you have to really be strong in order to hold it there. And the way it looks in the movie is uh, phenomenal. So it was fun. He was terrifying in this movie. How did he get into the mindset of a psycho? <laughs> Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I guess I have a psycho inside of me. <laughs> Who doesn't? I need to know what I stand to win. Everything. Just call it friendo. By that I mean the actor is forced to understand every aspect of himself or herself in order to be able to convey those emotions. We all have many dark sides inside that hopefully by being rational and educating ourselves, we don't let them out. But we are animals. We have instincts and the actor is obliged to be in contact with those instincts, putting their, their, their rationality away. And that's what the character is in this case. I need to know whose idea was it for him to have this haircut? The Coins, the Coen brothers. I let my hair grow because I didn't know what they wanted to do with my hairstyle and Paul LeBlanc, which he was amazing hairdresser, saw a picture that the Coen brothers brought to him about a guy in a brothel in Texas in the 60s that was having this haircut. Paul did like and in a second I had this thing on my head and it was like shit, okay. Uh, I have to live with this for the next three months. It was a fantastic idea because it's very clean and, and methodical and, and mathematical. Like everything has to be perfect as the way he wanted the things to be. Watch Skyfall again last night. Anyone else think that Javier Bardem will be a great Joker? It's a great role, but it's been so well accomplished by so many great actors that uh, I don't want to put my feet on, on that ground. Jack Nicholson, Heath Ledger, Jay Leto, and Joaquin Phoenix. Come on, enough. I wonder if he considered a rugby career before acting. No, I didn't because now rugby is professional sport, but when I was playing, uh, it was amateur. I quit playing because it happened that my first movie, Hamon Hamon, and the second one was coming out while I was playing. And you could see that most of the players of the other team didn't care much about the ball, much more about my nose. Like, okay, here's the movie star, we're gonna take care of him. <laughs> and I said, okay, it's, it's, it's time for me to quit. <laughs> Fun fact, Javier got drunk the night before he had scenes the next day. He did it so his character would be even more off and irritable with a slightly haggard look 
during shooting. No, that's not true. No, no, no. That was just me <laughs> without coffee. I had a great time with Josh, I mean, that's for sure. This was my first movie with an American production, American crew, and I, I felt kind of isolated a little bit. It was the first time that I would leave home and be outside of Spain, my comfort zone. And Josh took so good care of me and he was so adorable and he really made me feel welcome and protected. And, and since then, I adore him and I think he's beyond the, the great actor he is. He's a, he's a fun man to be with. It's so smart and so clever and so fun. Javier looks like a fantastic villain. He has the right atmosphere about him to be terrifying and you can tell he's having a fun time. Yes, when well, in Pirates of the Caribbean, I have a great fun. That role in a movie like that is about that. It's about having fun and, and going off the limits. We live in this fantastic world where pirates, ghosts try to hunt Jack Sparrow. They are definitely related, right? <laughs> I know, I get that a lot. Jeffrey Dean Morgan, what a great actor. He's way more handsome than I am. I'm always very pleased that they say that we look alike because I think he's very handsome. I don't think he's getting the best part of that <laughs> comparison. And we haven't met yet. I'm waiting for the day that we both will meet and say, hey, hey brother, how you doing? <laughs> he apparently worked as a stripper for one day early in his career. I need more details. I'm gonna give you the details. It was very funny. I stepped out of a cake for a girlfriend of someone. Uh, I was. 19, 20. And then we went to a disco to celebrate. And then I did it again there without cake this time. And they hired me. And since I was kind of having a good time and kind of drunk, I said, yeah, I'll do it. When I woke up the day after, I realized I have to show up on a Saturday night to do it in front of people. And I did, but I took my mother and my sister with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I will feel less alone and, uh, and I did it for one day and then I left because he was like, shit, this is not my thing. <laughs> he's been in so many great movies. I wonder if he's taking home any props from set. No, really, I'm not very much into collecting anything. No, I have the teeth from Skyfall. They were cool, but I'm, I'm not good at collecting anything. I feel like I go there, I do it and I leave and he stays there and I'd rather than bringing it with me. Dune's musical score still gives me chills. Yeah, wait until you hear Dune part two musical score, which has some elements and tunes from the first one, but it's a different world and it's crazy good. It's uh, absolutely mesmerizing. Okay, so I've heard what internet has to say, only the good parts, thank you very much. I responded what I could and thanks for watching.